Hello everybody, I just want to take a couple minutes to create this brief video on this very busy day. The reason I say busy is because today is October 1st, 2015 and we hope you still have a pulse, you're still breathing. Take a deep breath if you haven't and we're going to get through this day together. This video is going to address some questions uh, that we've been getting so far today regarding ICD-10 and we hope it helps. The first thing we want to address is the default diagnosis codes. If you're looking at the screen, you're going to see that there's a couple diagnosis codes that are in red. And the reason that's happening is because of two things that you've probably set up already in your system. And that's entering in your ICD-10 codes and setting the ICD version inside of your insurance carriers. So before I show you how to correct this within the case so that it shows ICD-10 codes, let me show you an area in Metasoft where you can map your uh, ICD-9 codes to ICD-10 codes because you may not even have your 10 codes inside of the system. The way you do this is you go to Tools, go down to Services, and select Create ICD-10 Mappings. In this window, click on the one-to-one -one mappings, and this is going to show you all your ICD-9 ICD codes and the suggested ICD-10 codes over here on the right. All you have to do is just check on the boxes on the codes that you want to have mapped. Most offices will select all of the codes. And then you cre click on Create Selected Code. This is going to create a brand new ICD-10 code that's mapped to your ICD-9 code. So now you have a list of ICD-10 codes in your database. We still recommend that you use the Encoder Pro program. If you don't have that in Metasoft already, please contact your sales representative because this program is going to make things a lot easier for you. It's like having an electronic diagnosis code book where you can look up the latest codes and the latest descriptions. The third tab here is other mappings. These are for codes that have multiple suggestions for ICD-10 codes. Same thing, you just check off the ones that you want and click on Create Selected Code. So if you've already done that, then the next thing you want to make sure that you've checked is that your insurance carriers are set to ICD-10. So go back to Tools, Services, and then select Set ICD Version. This window will show you all your insurance carriers just put a check mark in code set. Make sure that ICD-10 is selected. And you're going to do this if you don't see that ICD-10 is under this column of code set and you don't have an effective date. So once you've done these uh, items at the top, then check off ICD-10 effective date. And you're probably going to enter in October 1st so that anything going forward from October 1st will require you to enter an ICD-10 code and then select all your insurance carriers and then click on update selected. Okay, so once you've verified that you've got your codes entered in there and your insurance carriers are updated, let's go back to that patient example. So from here, a quick way to make this change for your default diagnosis codes is go inside of the patient's case by right clicking on the case, click edit case. You can also do this through the patient list and then click the Diagnosis tab. If you have nine codes in here, what you're going to need to do is click on the magnifying glass for each of them, and then look up the first uh, diagnosis code. So in this example, 786.09, you're going to see the 10 codes that are already associated to it. This one has multiple ones, so just select the appropriate one. Do the same thing for any remaining default nine codes that you have. This one's 786.2. Click OK. Save it. So now when you click New, you'll see that the red is no longer highlighted. OK, finally, for all of you electronic claims customers who you're, are sending through Revenue Management, make sure that you have run the latest updates for Revenue Management. The way you do that is you go to your Windows Search, you're going to search for Check for Updates. Once you find it, launch the program. And on this Welcome screen, you're going to click Next through all of the windows until it tells you that it's updated. Once you do that, then you'll be able to resubmit your claims with your updated ICD-10 codes.
Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video and found it helpful. If you did, let us know by giving us a thumbs up by clicking on the like button below. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to write those in the comment section below. And if you want to get more helpful videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks!